Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. 2018 Mountain West Men's Basketball Championships. A gorgeous look at the strip on a beautiful day. But we are inside the Thomas and Mack Center. Getting ready for the third and final matchup of the day. Number 11, San Jose State getting set to take on number 6, Wyoming. Hello again, everyone. Ari Wolf alongside Doug Gottlieb and Doug. Looking at this matchup, Wyoming, a dark horse to win the whole thing. They've got great weapons. What kind of chances do you give them to go on a run? Uh, I give a pretty good chance, but remember they got to get by San Jose State. And you look at the records, you're like, one conference win, no way. But they've played Wyoming tough. They have, very and, tough. And this is a team that got a ton of size inside. And remember, when, when Wyoming last beat San Jose State, took them 11 threes in the first half to kind of get them going. Wyoming at times can be overly dependent upon three. So do I think Wyoming is capable of winning four games in four days? I do. I do. I think uh, they have elite talent. They can stretch you out with their big guys. They can get to the rim as well. But you can't get to even the second round unless you take care of business against San Jose State. That would shock the world with an upset. But it wouldn't be that shocking considering how competitive they've been in the second half of the Mountain West Conference season. Well, you mentioned three-point shooting. We transition to San Jose State. Ryan Wellage, honorable mention, all-conference. He's the guy that leads the way for the Spartans. It's, it's fascinating because you look at both teams, and there's a couple of big guys that I don't know if everybody knows who they are nationally, but in the league... Ryan Wellich, Indiana kid, can really shoot the basketball. Also a high academic achiever, we'll talk about it. But playing the stretch four, can can shoot it, can handle it inside, not afraid. He's only 205, so he struggles with thickness and athleticism of defenders, but he is really, really skilled. Ryan Wellich, one of those kind of secret weapons that Jean Prelu is gonna try and ride to success in the Mountain West Conference. Now, for Wyoming, they've got a bunch of weapons we could focus on, but Hayden Dalton, what I love about his game is the versatility. He can do a lot of things, and he's the kind of guy who gives you great energy and has a lot of skills that can really help them out. We give you one thin white guy who plays inside <laughs> out. I give you another, like, match the, you know, it's like that, that Spider-Man gif where they're looking at each other. Kind of the same thing. I think he's a little bit... Uh, he, he's a little bit tougher inside. He'll finish. They can play him at the four, at the five. Has a nice little fadeaway game. Uh, like Wellich, actually maybe more of a late bloomer than Ryan Wellich yep. was. And he just keeps getting better. He might even be 6'10". So I like both these players. You watch them on tape, you're like, man, I've never heard of any of them. And they can both really play, and they'll both guard each other, and they're both going to get buckets if you have your hand down out to about 22 feet. All right, and earlier today we had an overtime game. Then we just had a very hard-fought game that came down to the end. And these Spartans took the Cowboys to overtime on January 27th. And who knows what we've got in store. For more, let's go to Kristen. That's right, guys. Well, we want everyone to be a part of this broadcast along with us. It's not just about the three of us. It is about all of you. So there's a couple of ways that everyone watching can contribute. You Mountain West fans probably already know this, but just in case you forgot or you're new to these Facebook broadcasts, here is how you can get involved all throughout the game. You can see the comments scrolling either below you or beside you, depending on how you're watching. Keep those comments coming. We're going to be talking to you throughout the game. Ari and Doug have their own special monitor just for your comments. I've got my phone. We are reading your comments and asking you questions throughout the game because we want you to be a part of this. Now, the other cool way, and I'm a big fan of this, is you can post on Instagram and use this hashtag, MWMadness. We've been using it all day. MWMadness. Post on Instagram. Show us how you're watching. Show us who you're rooting for. Whatever it is, and we will show your pictures on this game, which I think is just awesome. So remember, Instagram, hashtag MWMadness, and keep those comments coming throughout the game because I am checking on it, guys. All right, great stuff, Kristen. And now let's recap game two. Utah State, a winner over Colorado State, 76-65, despite trailing 20-5 in the early going. Kobe McEwen, 25 points on 8 of 18 shooting. Dwayne Brown Jr. fouled out but had a good game, 15 points and 8 rebounds. 
Sam Merrill, all 11 of his points coming in the second half. A valiant effort from the Rams. Bonner goes for 15 points. Prentice Nixon really got them going early with 14 points at seven rebounds, but they were held scoreless over the final four minutes and 28 seconds. Coach Prelo and his lineup. Jalen James is really the veteran of the group. He's the captain, a senior. Keith Fisher the third. Fun player to watch. Got a great motor. He'll grind on the offensive glass. And then on the other end for the Cowboys, there is Allen Edwards, two-time national champion himself as a player at Kentucky. And his lineup has got some scorers and some playmakers. Justin James, Hayden Dalton, and Alan Herndon tonight will set the school record playing in his 132nd career game for the Cowboys. I think James can easily give you a 25. Oh, Alan yeah. Herndon, uh, when he makes shots, can give you 20 points a game. This is, this is an offense-heavy lineup going against San Jose State for Alan Edwards. All right, we're ready for game three of our triple header. And I, I didn't see Doug even get a coffee. I mean, you just got this kind of energy. The, the hoops just keeps you going. Love it. And all these uh, Wyoming fans, you know, they're, yeah. they're spread out around this arena. But with the women about to play next, maybe they play, I think they play the late game tonight. Wyoming fans travel. There's no doubt about that. Wellage at the elbow, gets it inside. Barry. Good defense, still plenty of time on the shot clock. J.C. Hill's been running the point right here. He'll pull up from the elbow and can't get it to go. Little Cody Kelly, just 5'11", and that seems generous. Gets the rebound. And this gentleman with the ball, Justin James. If you like Josh Adams a few years ago, this guy's got some similar skills. But not quite as vertical as as Josh Adams is, but got a great first step. Cody Kelly, that's a nice way to start the game. The easy two, he's from Gillette, Wyoming. Local kid, decided to stay in Wyoming and play for the Cowboys. That was fun last night. They had the band and the cheerleaders. They were marching through the Hard Rock Cafe as they do the night before every game. Wellage three, yes. Orion Wellage. First all-time in career threes for San Jose State, now 155. Ryan Welch is kind of a late bloomer at He still needs to put on some thickness, but you can see if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile as a shooter. Justin James, the blow-by basket and the foul. And that's what you were talking about to Josh Adams. He just has another gear. First, let's take a look at Cody Kelly, who's not really a scorer. Gets a little handoff, and everybody kind of stays in their man. You're supposed to bluff and then get back. Make him finish over length. Well, this is just a hesitation. And like Keith Fisher playing that massive knee brace. The redshirt freshman from Westchester High School in Southern California. Tore his ACL in his senior season. So he's not the same athlete he was. Got an undersized post, an all-city player, all-southern section player, Westchester. He'll give great effort. May not be able to get off the ground like he once did, but he'll play hard. This team's really played better during the second half of the season despite their record. And that basket goes down for J.C. Hillsman. Averages just over nine points per game. Lean on Hillsman for some leadership. Junior from Champaign, Illinois. Hayden Dalton, that's an easy two. I love getting scores. Easy baskets early, not, like not knocking down a jumper, getting a layup, get that first basket, get your confidence going. Billsman looks at Wellage. Wellage, step back. Soft touch, yes. Good start for him. Oh, we got a viewer in the Netherlands. Kristen, there you go. chalk up another country. The Netherlands is on board. We, uh, we've been keeping track all throughout these three games. I think we're up to 10 or 11 countries by now. James hits the three. He doesn't shoot it great from out there, 30%. In their overtime win against San Jose State, he went for 30, and here he is. Watch out. Oh! All right, 
right, well, he's uh, wanted to make sure everybody knew he was in the building. He's got eight points. We haven't played three minutes. Just a junior. And this ball off San Jose State. You can't throw it up like that with James in the neighborhood. Uh, great speed from Justin James. And in the Casper Star Tribune, there's a great article. His girlfriend runs track. She's a junior at Wyoming. Jerry A. Davis, who's from Casper, Wyoming. Well, that's the speed between the relationship. They, they, they <laughs> compete with everything. Yeah, that's fun. I'm not sure she's faster than just, Justin James. He's got some speed, though. I don't know. Man. She might have. I don't think she's got the verticality either. <laughs> he can rise. Here's Herndon to Dalton. Reverse. Uh, too much on it. That's where Dalton, you know, still didn't play a lot in high school. Still you know, played in junior college. Has to develop a finishing package around the hoop. Go up in there and get fouled. Get to the free throw line. Get two free ones. Nice extra pass. Isaiah Nichols can't get off the shot. Hillsman's triple. Yes. J.C. Hillsman with a good, strong start to the game. He's got five. And these two teams, they put against each other, score a lot of points. San Jose State over 80 points averaged in the two losses against Wyoming. James, he's been feeling it. <laughs> it continues. He's got 11. This is why we thought this I team mean, could go on a run, because they got guys who can just light it up. Wellage, no, James the rebound. He checked coming. Got to, got to check and see where you are. Hernan instead wants the three, no good. He is capable of making that shot. 33% on the season from beyond the arc. They got Cody Kelly staying all over Wellage wherever he goes. Now they switch it to James. Well edge, got the defender pass. Another soft touch. Well, we're paying attention to James. Right? Well edge put together quite the first day. That's a seventh point. Got a three. A couple mid rainers. Hard in. Off the glass. Hillsman to drive, and he's fouled by Hernan. And we'll have a stoppage on the floor, and players will get a chance to catch their breath. We will not, as we turn it over to Kristen. Kristen, what's the latest and greatest? Hold on. We got Saul watching from Pakistan. I'm not buying that one. <laughs> you don't. Picture or it didn't happen. Video or it didn't happen. Yeah, so. To Doug's so, point. There's no way. To I'm, Doug's I'm not point. buying it. Show, Saul show me. Don't, it to don't us. tell me. Show me. Well, Saul can prove it to us by going hashtag MWMadness on Instagram. That is where we are putting our photos. So, Saul, send us the picture oh. on Instagram. Now, this now is, what are you going to do if Saul comes up with a picture of him and Bex? Then, I guess hey, Doug will leave let's talk about Let's talk about Barrel Man right here. He's, Cowboy Ken is what the back of his barrel says. I like I that he has research. the ace bandage knee brace. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Look, he's got to be prepared. You got the boots, the long socks, the barrel. That was, we're going to see did more. We're going to check back in on him. under the barrel? Does he have like shorts no, on the I barrel? Didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. go that yeah. far in my research. Is and he wearing the barrel? Is the barrel wearing him? <laughs> and the question is, does he do that same outfit during the football season in late oh, November? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He's outside. committed. Oh, That's yeah. a tradition. Okay. So I want to talk about this too really quickly. Um, we have been doing, the three of us have been taking pictures. This is our third game of three. Yes. This is game one. Yes. We want to see the proje uh, pro uh, progression. Look at little Jacob Olman's. Look at Jacob giving us some love. We're using that hashtag MW Madness. Now here's game two where we had to run and eat. I just want to point this out. I thought we were all taking a picture eating our sushi burritos. I'm the only one eating. You guys are posed with a sushi burrito in your hand. That's yeah, because I had already eaten one and a half. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm he was in a hurry. Pig. I didn't know that we all weren't right. all doing it. All right. All right, roll right number three. Game three. All right.
back. We're, we're still, still holding there. up. We're, we're holding, holding up. By the wrinkles under my eyes. Yeah, the bags. we've all got it. Just, my eyes starting I, to droop a little bit. I had bit. a full head of hair before I started. <laughs> Look at it. It's unbelievable. So we want to see your pictures, not just ours. Use yeah. that hashtag MW That's actually Madness. a picture of me right there. <laughs> <in> the <game>. <laughs> <laughs> Might be us afterwards. Who knows? Uh, apparently they've run out of white paper, Barrel guy is going to have to hit the salad bar. Otherwise, he's going to need a bigger barrel. Give some shout outs here. We got James watching from uh, Fort Mill. Jonathan Hall watching in North Carolina. Chris Reed says, let's go, Pokes. And Brian is rooting for the upsets in Jose State. Hillsman gets the first free throw. Hillsman's got six points in the game. Two for two. Spartans are hanging around, down three. James leads all scores. He's got 11 points and the basketball. Akagorski. Oh, good play, fit, or good pump fake there by Hayden Dalton, and Hillsman commits the foul. The other thing I like about Dalton's game is Seems like he has a high basketball IQ, makes good decisions at the right time. Sometimes. I mean, remember, didn't play a lot of basketball in high school. Yeah. So I think sometimes there's some there's some moments to which he could steal some points or simply move the ball. But yes, I generally think you're correct. We have an important update from Kirk in the Facebook comments. He says, Barrel Man is in that barrel in the coldest of football yeah, games. Yeah, I know I knew, okay. I knew that. I was, Maybe when it's I've done football up there, I'm usually Maybe so cause... cold even in the broadcast booth that I'm... Or is it possible he can't get out of the barrel? That's why he's... He did it there. all day, every day. Well, I think like he's going right at Dalton. Akagorski the rebound. Their games are like doppelgangers for each other. Redding finds James, and he's still hot. 14 points. And that's what you're talking about with Hayden Dalton. That's where you're right. Where yeah. the, 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 they're unselfish to a fault. That's an extra pass to a guy who's running a fever. And he finds him again for another assist. Somebody check his career high because we yeah. could be well on our way. I know he's had 30 against San Jose State. And 33 is his career high and he's got 16 already. Well, this is a great team play. I'll show you why. Hayden Dalton gets the steal, right? And uh, and it's turned him with a deflection. But watch Redding as he just kind of yeah, smart. steps in the way, not called a foul. James ends up getting the layup, but his other teammates set everything up for him. So James not only has 16 points, guys, he hasn't missed a shot. Six for six from the field, three for three from beyond the arc. One for one from the free throw line. Jordan, uh, Matthew summed it up well in the comments. It's just fire emojis. Yes, if he was playing NBA Jam, it would be, he's <laughs> on fire. <laughs> oh, right, anyway, that's way off. Eight point game. And Simmons pushes off Caleb Simmons. Freshman from California, Desert Vista High School. Only recruit signed by Coach Prelo. Coach Prelo got the job in early August. But he's looking forward to a full off season to get this program in the direction he wants it to head. No question, he's been kind of all over. Most recently, Colorado. Associate head coach. I bet Colorado getting the big win over Arizona State earlier today. Then a, kind of a scuffle ensues when Colorado got a dunk with seven seconds to go. That's a no-no. It's the unwritten rules of basketball. You don't need to dunk the basketball with seven seconds to go when the game's over. Well, it wasn't quite that late, but it was almost affected UNLV a late yeah. dunk that was missed by McCoy. This is a nice comment here from Greg. He says he's watching from his work truck, taking a break from getting everybody power back in New Jersey. Nice to watch some games when working 16-hour days, seven days a week. Craig, thanks for all you're doing. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, get that get that power back. Get that Wi-Fi without power. <laughs> Let the man take a break yeah, and yeah, enjoy I mean, the game. Come on, man. Seriously, we got people without power. Greg, don't listen Greg, to him. Greg, don't We're listen happy to him. Take as much you. of a break as you need. Yeah, he's working seven days a week. Well, I know you, got, you watch on your cell phone, but we need to plug in cell phones. <laughs> 
Was it is uh, it was Winter Storm? It was like like Quinn or something like that, wasn't it? Did they give it? A, they gave they it, give a it a name. They yeah. name Winter Storm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Name Sorry, everything. I moved to California to not have to that not have to worry about it. Yeah. Winter Storm. I want to go ahead and get this started early because we, we found out and we know during these Mountain West games that people love to ask you questions. Okay. So we are doing Ask Doug. If you have a question for Doug, leave it in there with that hashtag, Ask Doug. Ask Doug. We'll keep it going all game long. We had some really good ones over the past couple games. I'll go ahead and start it out. Okay. Justin James already on fire. On fire. But yes. what stood out to me were his road numbers this year. He's averaging something like 23 points per game on the road. And not that this is, I mean, he's got plenty of home fans here. But, but just, it seems to me that that takes a different mindset to be great on the road and I feel like you're someone who would understand a lot of guys aren't right no no I, I mean a lot of times you like playing on the road I, I used to like you like to be booed you know you just you like it just gets you going like people yelling at you it's great as you guys know we've covered this league for long enough great venues in this league yep. from D Glenn Spectrum Event Center Utah State to the pit to Moby Arena we talked about, the down to Montezuma, Diego, yeah, Montezuma yeah. Mesa. And those things get you going. That's why you play college basketball. We did the game. Come, oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying, kid comes up from Florida, from Portland, St. Lucie. Like, you're not used to great atmospheres. You get good atmospheres, it gets you going. We did, the three of us did the game um, in New Mexico. And Hayden Golden said he asked his parents to come yeah. to that game because he was talking about those great venues and how it gets you going. So, I get it. I get that, and I also think that there's something to when it's just about you and the team. You're not at home. You're not worried about your friends and family and, and who you're going to go to dinner with after the game. It's mainly about the people who make the trip. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. Now, I will say this. Some people are like, well, you know, think about home as you sleep in your own bed. But a lot of college coaches, you sleep in a hotel yeah. the night before your game, which I've never really understood. We have to do that. I think it's cool that you know where you are. You're not getting into any mission. Uh, what is it? The Aztecs this have is, to... uh, Chris says, uh, Doug, or Eric says, Doug, the Aztecs have to win out to make the tournament. Yes. Yes. That's you could be an Aztecs fan. Just that's an easy question. On it. Yeah. But they also have the talent to win out, and yeah. they're starting to play well. Yes. Redding finds James. Again, James has not missed a shot. He's got 16 points. Rex wants to know, Doug, is the Mountain West doomed to be a one-bid league for the foreseeable future? No, I, I look, I think there's got a good chance for Boise to get in this year. Chance for Boise to get in. And if Gonzaga joins the conference, you can add another bid next year. I don't even think it's that much. It's, you know, this has been a year in which San Diego State's been a little bit disappointing. And, you know, New Mexico has been rebuilding, but you look at the job they did and turn that thing over at the end of the year. And I think UNLV's probably a year away as well. Hillsman hits a deep triple, make it a five-point game. A three from Akagorski, no good. Barry the rebound. I love Barry's story. He came to the U.S. for high school, didn't speak English. Now he speaks four languages, including English. Oh, nice pass he makes right there, and Wellage gets the bucket, but credited a pretty pass there from Umar Barry. And we've got an offensive foul in the first missed shot. Actually, the foul was before the shot, so I'm not sure it's going to affect the shot total. I like it. They come over to the camera on us, and you guys are just hard at work checking I'm, Facebook. Yeah, uh, everyone probably it. thinks that we're looking at our phones. Oh, no, no, you're working. The broadcast, no, I'm working. Yeah, <laughs> we're working here. And another one for you, He's Doug. working. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. Caleb My son's starting in center field, by the way. Oh, well, he's left-handed. He's more first baseman pitcher, but that's okay. <laughs> Don't see a lot of lefties in center field. What is he, like, oh, Steve yeah. Finley? Uh, we could be. Caleb wants to know if Nevada doesn't win the Mountain West tourney, how high do they deserve to be seated in the NCAA tournament? There's so many variables. Yeah. Who do they lose to? Who else wins? When do they lose? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, more, but more, not even when, but who do they lose to, right? You know, do you lose in the championship game? Dalton 
almost lost the handle. All right, so here's a question yes. for Mr. Peterson. My father, Virgil, wants to know if the Pokes win, when is the next game? And if they win 8.30 Pacific time tomorrow, they would take on the New Mexico Lopez. Good question. Make sure Dad knows what's up. Let Virgil know. James, oh, and he can't get it to go, but he'll go to the free throw line. Do we determine what James' career high is? 33. We're on the 16 watch. already? And his previous first half career high has just been matched. 17. Josh Adams been gone for two years, right? So they overlapped a year. I, I would have liked to have seen those two go one on one. They had another small guard who was really athletic at the time as well. Uh, and of course, remember they had Larry Nance as well. Oh, they yeah. had some. And what's crazy about it was Larry Scheidt was their head coach. They played super slow. Yeah. And you go back four years ago, made the NCAA tournament. Uh, win in this tournament. Yeah. Oh, Riley uh, Graybow. Riley Graybow was was another another Colorado kid that was pretty athletic. Mahernan, basket and the foul. Well, we mentioned Colorado kids. Herndon's from Denver, Denver area, and what a tremendous player he's become. He can face up and hit you from three, and there just puts the ball on the deck and creates. He's been just Omar solid. Berry. Yeah, I mean, he shoots 49% from the field, 33% from the three-point line. He's made 42 threes, honorable mention all Mountain West this year, and he's number one in the Mountain West in blocks with 69. That's 24th best in America. Yes, you're right, Steve. It's great bow, not great bow. But yeah, look, that's why the Wyoming thing is weird this year because I, I just feel like they're a little bit more talented than the record. Yeah, at times they've looked like they can. They went through that. Hey, look, they're, they went they, that stretch where they lost four of six. But they have wins over San Diego State, Boise State, Nevada, and two overtimes, and at Fresno State. So they've beaten all the heavy hitters. Right. Swept by New Mexico. And that's who they're buying to play in the that's, next round. See, that's not a foul. That's a box out. How are you supposed to play if you're not allowed to box out your... I don't understand that one. And Warren Greenwood wants you to know that Herndon is from Colorado Springs. So that's right. Accurate. He's from the Springs. Yep. Widefield High School. How is that a foul on Bauman? I don't, I don't get that one. If anything, that could have been displacement on Herndon. John Prelo is like, you gotta be kidding. Ashton Chastain's brother is watching from California. That would be Alexander Chastain. Hello, Alexander. Twenty-seven, nineteen. Herndon with five points. There you see his very solid numbers this season. They're going to lose some. I mean, they got some guys coming back, but Hernan's a senior, Dalton's a senior, Akogorski's a senior. Hillsman. Nice move. Hillsman's had a very good first half. 12 points. Thompson's were fun to listen to. Well, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, that's nice. Hayden Dalton from 15. Well, he went old school. Was that Dr. J off the glass? Yeah, it was a little, I think it was a little reverse pivot. Little <laughs> was that Jack a little Sigma. Tim Duncan? Tim Jack, Duncan? Well, Jack, Jack Sigma, Sigma, Jack yeah. Sigma. Reverse pivot to Jack Sigma. Hillsman. Why not? He's feeling it. Hey, uh, I mean, Hillsman really struggled early in the year shooting. He's been shooting better of late as Kelly turns the basketball over. Oh, yeah, he lost his starting job for a long time. We've got a four-point game with seven and a half minutes to go in the first.
first half. We'll be right back after these words from the Mountain West Conference in these respective schools. Why do the most adventurous minds thrive in the most adventurous environments? Why do physical feats often inspire intellectual ones? Where the depth of our thinking parallels the depth of our powder. Why are we drawn to a place as wild as our imagination? Where single tracks are as important as degree tracks. Because Wyoming is as open as your future. The University of Wyoming. Uh, that's that's right. It's good luck. That's cute. It is a cute a stuff. Jacket animal. on and everything. Is that a bear? Is that a seal? What do you think that is? A Someone will tell question. us in the comments. It's I got, a, it's yeah. got a, like a coat on too. It's got a got a it's got a nice <laughs> jacket on. It does. He's got and a nice I think that's a scarf. scarf. Oh, it's a scarf. scarf. It's a scarf. You gotta have a scarf. It. Polar it's bear is what I mean. A little bit of a cold. chill in here. <laughs> so one of the big things that's been all the talk on Facebook throughout these games is the potential of Gonzaga joining the Mountain West. And Ari, I know you you have some pretty direct knowledge about, you've talked to some people about it, I've right? talked to some people, and people think it's going to happen in, yeah. in pretty quickly. And I would love to know what all the Mountain West fans who are watching right now think of that. Do you want Gonzaga in? Let us know. I mean, how could any fan of the conference not want them? Well, we can talk to some people that weren't happy in who? the Facebook conference. Who, who, I mean, who doesn't who? want a great program coming in? I'm just in? saying that they're saying it in the Facebook conference. I just think who? it improves the profile of the conference. Who matters? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I, I thought think everybody think matters. Matter. Everybody does yeah. not matter. <laughs> I, I, I think the guy who said make. he was watching in Pakistan doesn't matter because that's a lie. People lie on Facebook. Maybe he's the guy who doesn't want Gonzaga in. <laughs> Why would you not want Gonzaga in? But Seth's right there says no Gonzaga. Brett says no Gonzaga. Why? I'm not making this up, Why? guys. Patrick, Why? Brett, Why? Patrick can't give me the downside. An articulate because, reason. Because they're not a football? Because they don't have football? Like, so who what? cares? Who cares? They've got 11 it, it schools bring, for basketball. You get one more, you have 12. Everything's easier. It right. It becomes a, yeah. if you, if you bring in a legit college basketball powerhouse. A top 10 program. Uh, let's slow down. I mean, they were top 10 a lot of years. They went to the championship. Not a top 10. That's, a, that's different than a top 10 program. Okay, what would you describe them as a top what program? One of the 25 best programs. So you're a top 25 guy. I mean, okay. like, look, they, they went to the Final Four, but, you know, they've, they've been perennial, I would guess, underachievers based upon ranking at times. Made it I, think it's an I think it's an incredible program. It's not a better program than UCLA and Arizona in the, in the West Coast. It's just not. It's not North Carolina or Duke or Syracuse or Louisville or Kansas or Kentucky. I mean, I go on. It's not that the, and I, and I'm, I think it's great. Wellage connects, and it's a one-point game. But I also think it brings a ton of legitimacy to the Mountain West because I think people outside the West Coast would say, hey, the WCC, isn't that just as good as the Mountain West? It's not. It's not. It's not. No. What, what this league needs is, you know, look, taking San Jose State was a bit of a reach. Get into that market and hoping their football and basketball would get better. And it's just been a slog for them. It's hard Cal State system to get it going. Right. And then this is something that nobody knows anything official about, but... It begs the question, if Gonzaga leaves the WCC, what happens to BYU? And then BYU could be, that's quite a catch for both basketball and football. Well, I mean, like, look, I think if I'm the Mountain West, I can cons I consider not only BYU, but if you want to add another team, like, that gives you a 12. You think about bringing Hawaii back in. Hawaii, obviously, travel-wise, is a mess. Tough. 
you get that you get the old whack friends together. Yeah, there we go. We got that right now. Hillsman and Wellage, 26 combined points. The rest of the team zip. Or do you go back after you go after SMU now that SMU's basketball and you know football seems a little bit more stable? Yeah. Get back into the Dallas market. I'm sure all the football programs would like getting back into Texas. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed the trips to TCU. It's fun. Louis Adams off the bench just comes in to score, and that's what he does right there. And then, of course, the question was question would be, and Louis Adams, he gets the ball, he's going downhill. Oh, yeah. Downhill to his right hand. He's got one thought in mind. And the question is, what happens to WCC? Do they then finally add Seattle U that wanted to get in that league for so long? Hillsman, no loose ball. Adams has got it. This thing's going up. Going hard to his right hand. <laughs> well, on the season, Adams has just 38 assists and 56 turnovers. When he gets it, he's going to the rim. In transition. He kind of pats it with his left hand, but he come back to that right hand. A tremendous downhill player. Understands his role. He's not only he's accepted it, but is the, the senior from Chicago went to Odessa College. He's getting it, he's going hard every time he gets the basketball. What do you got, Malby? Well, I've got to, I've got a great- Everybody say, never say, never say no to, no to BYU. Why, because BYU- Everybody left. hates BYU, yeah, was in the Mountain West. Happy. They were hating. Here's what BYU brings in. They bring in their own TV network. They bring in a, they're big in Vegas. You know, the second biggest more, uh, more oh, yeah. population big. is in, is in uh, the Salt Lake City is, is here in Vegas. Look at that. Shout out to uh, Ambriz the broker. Got FB up on the big screen watching the game with my pops. Let's go Rams. That a boy watching your pops. Nothing like it. I wish I could do that. My dad's watching from up, upstairs. Yeah, me and you yeah. both. I don't know if my pops like would have been ready for three games. Might have tuned yeah. in for this you one. Might have said, Ari. <laughs> my, oh, we'll my dad LG loves one. ball. He'd be yeah. here. My dad's from Brooklyn. He liked a different kind of basketball. I don't understand, my dad's from the Bronx. What's a different kind of basketball? I don't know, like hard nose. He wanted to see like Manhattan play Fordham. He'd think that he wouldn't believe these guys were great teams. He'd be like, what's going on in West Coast? Even? I can tell you Manhattan yeah. Fordham are not good teams. <laughs> I just, he was a New York. Patrick says, too bad Mountain West couldn't have had a Wichita State. I, I think one, you know, I, I don't know if Wichita, if they could do that again, they would, they would, they would join the Mountain West. But I think if you look at Creighton leaving the Missouri Valley, Wichita leaving the Missouri Valley. You know, the thing that it sacrifices with, with those two schools is their Olympic sports. It's not the same yeah. with Gonzaga because they're still in these same markets anyway. That's a nice pass. Can't finish. Dalton, the offensive rebound. James, get another one up. Long rebound. Spartans come away with it. Jalen James with it. Wellage will launch and connect. Wellage is so good. He's gotten better every year. And there goes Adams. Oh, he may look to pass here. Hey. Tough shot, no. Loose ball, fight for it. Jalen James comes away with it. Oh, Dalton. Great, oh, behind the back, Aiden Dalton. And the finish, wow. well done. Aiden Dalton. He's fun. Second team all Mountain West. 18 points per game, eight rebounds. Made 82 threes in the regular season. Too strong, hurting the rebound. Cowboys, they want to run, run, run. Dalton's three. Nope. Hillsman the rebound.
Three minutes to go in the opening half, been entertaining basketball. Well edge, not this time. James up high for the rebound. I hate Dalton's a little bit tired. He's just taking two terrible shots in a row. And that coach looked at him like, are you out of your mind? Alan Edwards is like. Hillsman stop and pop. Boy, J.C. Hillsman's going to keep him in it. He's got 16. Well, it just got 14. All 30 of the Spartans' points. James off a curl. Floater, yes. See, he's got 20 in the first half. He's got 20 of 36. And San Jose State yeah. has two players yeah. that have scored. By 30. <laughs> Bizarre. That's why they play him. Why not, Hillsman? All the time he doesn't get it to go. James the rebound. James has got three rebounds. Again, this Justin has been the James, best, yeah, this has been the best played of the three games. Yeah. The other two were close. You guys kept saying they're great games. I didn't want to correct you at the time. <laughs> Our yeah. bad. This, this, though, you're agreeing. Well, is maybe great offensively. Game. Games. Melanie says, we don't need BYU's TV. We have our own, Gottlieb. I'm saying that it gives you more platforms to sell the brand of the Mountain West Conference. See, I read that as, we have our own Gottlieb. Like, she wants you on the games. But I think you're well, right. He could the still intonation. be on the games and have BYU the, in it. It's all about the intonation. I, look, I just think it? BYU, you know, I, I don't get why people are down at BYU. Uh, my ninth year in the conference, let me tell you, BYU sparked a lot of negative reaction from opposing fans. But I think having one school in your conference be the villain is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It inspires people. Get some angry. Stadium is your new national sports network, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Live and classic games, daily live studio, original programming. Check your local listings or go to watchstadium.com and click where to watch stadium. Welcome to the game. All right, Kristen, what's going on? I just want to give some shout outs here. We got Robbie DeVille. He says, big shot, Rob, watching from San Jose. Let's go. I'm their volunteer manager, Mr. Half Court Shot, hashtag MW Madness. And then Vicki Vanderkoek, she says, uh, Vicki Vanderkoek James, excuse me, says, Justin James family watching from Port St. Lucie, from Okeechobee, from Palm Bay, from West Palm Beach, from Coral Springs, from Fort Lauderdale. Go Pokes. You got to think she's pretty happy uh, right yeah. now. Yes. And then I really like this Ask Doug question. Again, keep your questions for Doug coming all game long. Uh, Cole wants to know, what are your thoughts on Wyoming's freshman class? Well, I mean, they're playing their veterans, so I mean... Cole. He's looking toward the future. I, I understand. Uh, look. Could Cowboy Ken get in there on that on the, in the freshman class? Do you think he's got some eligibility left? Cowboy what? Ken looks seriously uncomfortable. Look at him. Sit down. He can't sit down in that. Yeah, I guess sitting is not. Yeah, how do you though? sit? I mean, if he says he's going to the can, isn't he already in the can? Oh. But it up. Boom. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of the logistics we're not sure of. And, you know, Frank, I'm not that interested. <laughs> He'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, in regards to their freshman, look, I think, they, they think they've done a great job. But a lot of this you don't know. The thing about Wyoming, they've done a very good job of, you go back to when Larry Shiat was a coach, to when Allen has taken over, is, is a good player development program. Yes. We, you look at Alan Herndon's improvement, Hayden Dalton's improvement, um, Justin James's improvement. They have, they have a really, really good job, and you watch them in home games and road games in the off season, the regular season. They do a great job of breaking down, almost have like pro workouts even before the game for their players. This is a program that understands in Laramie, Wyoming, you got to recruit kids with potential, but you're going to have to develop that potential if you want to win long term. And Paul, they've been able to do that. Yeah, Paul says this is the best time of year in college basketball all day long, and isn't that the truth, especially here in Las Vegas. Great set there out of a timeout to get the ball to Hayden Dalton with this match. Nichols the rebound. There is a two and a half second difference. Game clock to shot clock. Oh, 
Nichols probing. Leaves it short. Loose ball. James with it. Shot clock's off. Finds Kelly. Can't get the three off. He get it to James. Instead, it's Dalton. Herndon cleans it up. Allen Herndon. Such what a solid an player. Selfish possession. Everybody maybe, wanted to give it to somebody else. Maybe even Justin James, maybe a little too much. Like, dude, you got 18 in the half. Go ahead and let one go. But he felt like Hayden Dalton had his feet set better. Everyone touches the ball, and then Allen Herndon doesn't pout that he didn't get a touch. Gets an offensive rebound and put back. It's pretty good, pretty good first half offensively for the Cowpokes. Who lead by 10? Let's go to Kristen. Coach Doug, our analyst just called it a pretty good first half for you guys. What are you seeing? Uh, just like our energy and our activity and mixing it up from our man uh, with our zone. Guys are doing a good job of moving the basketball on offense as well and they're playing within each other. So I'm excited about that. Justin James, 20 points already. That's his highest uh, career first half total. What can you say about how he's played here and what do you want to see from him in the second half? Well, he has to continue. I mean, he's a, he's a kid with that type of talent to uh, be able to take over a game. But I like the way that he's doing it. He's not being selfish with it. He's trying to find his teammates and he's also rebounding the basketball, but taking advantage of opportunity. So going into the second half, he just has to continue to do that. All right, thank you so much for the time, Coach. We appreciate it. Well, we are here at the half of this game, and Wyoming fans know all about Hayden Dalton and what a powerhouse he is at basketball. But did you know that he actually got his start playing a different sport, one that's really big in his family? Check this out. Hayden Dalton is a versatile weapon for the Wyoming Cowboys. Dalton got it at three. When he has it going, um, gosh, I don't know if there's a better score uh, within our conference when he's filling it. His inside-outside game gives the impression he was born with a basketball in his hands. Truth is, he's still relatively new to the sport. I was more of a volleyball guy and my, my whole family played volleyball um, and I always played up with my sisters on their team and and then when I was you know 12 13 and 14 I played on a club team of all guys volleyball runs deep in the Dalton family blood with four sisters who all play at a high level including a former All-American at the University of Texas Dalton wearing number seven the 6'2 junior out of Parker Colorado a passion that nearly shaped Hayden's future. Some of my older cousins who were guys, they went out uh, to California and played and then went on successfully overseas and played and made money playing volleyball. Um, and so I thought I, that's what I was gonna do. But after his freshman year at Chaparral High School, Dalton opted for a different path. I grew a lot my sophomore year when I got serious, more serious about basketball, and then just started to kind of fall in love with the sport, and uh, I felt that was something I could get a lot better at. Hayden set his sights on playing college basketball someday, but after three years, not a single D1 offer came his way, so he enrolled at Central Wyoming College, where his dreams really started to take shape. I started seeing a lot of the Wyoming games on TV out there, and um, I, you know, I was like, wow, that's close to home. I'd love to be able to go there. And whenever I was watching the games, it just looked like the guys on the team liked each other and were having fun out there. After one season of junior college, Dalton was signed by the University of Wyoming. Coming here was just a whole nother level, D1. And my first year here, I, I got some playing time. And sometimes I'd be out there and just being like, whoa, like, these guys are good, you know? And but the learning curve was not as steep as it seemed. Yo, that was crafty from Dalton. It really Primarily, because of the skill set perfected years ago on the volleyball court. If you ever see me block a shot or something like that, it's like a volleyball approach, um, kind of. But yeah, I'm just a way better two feet jumping because of volleyball. James, but following with the slam, hated Dalton. I think just defensively, you know, moving your feet, sliding, you do that a lot in volleyball and staying low and different stuff like that. Hayden was a setter. And, uh, and the biggest thing I think about setters is vision, right? Like they, they have to see uh, peripherally the block, what everybody's doing, try to make the right read. To his credit, I think he, see, he sees things develop. He sees openings created, opportunities for him to play one-on-one -on -one that I don't think other players see. Nice, nice give and go. go. I think volleyball had to do with that. Cowboys director of player development, Matt Wise, knows the game of volleyball very well 
His mother, Mary Wise, is a two-time National Coach of the Year at the University of Florida. Stand front, stand front. Alan Edwards knows the game too. His wife played at the University of Kentucky. Both coaches believe Dalton's volleyball background not only helped him physically, but emotionally. Like if you ever watch volleyball, it, between every point, it is like life and death, right? Like every point is so much fire. And I think that's exactly how he plays. Every position, like you can watch him hit a big shot or we get a stop and he turns to the bench with all the emotion in the world. Trouble, that's a deep three. That reminds me of like high, high level volleyball players. It's that passion that has fueled Dalton's rise to an elite level in a short period of time. Dalton put back is gone and he's fouled. He ranks second on the team in scoring and leads the Cowboys in steals, rebounds, and three-point field goals. His confidence is uh, unbelievable. Um, obviously, the skill set helps it out, but at, at the same time, you know, when we throw the word confidence around, I think he puts in the work to feel that way when he's out there on the floor. So, you know, he's shooting it better. Um, he's handling it better. Uh, even added some uh, post, uh, post moves to his game as well. Wow! Hayden Dalton is poised for a bright future in basketball, but he says he'll never forget his roots that helped him grow into the elite athlete he is today. I'll always love to go back and play volleyball with my family or in the backyard or, you know, at an open gym or something like that, but uh, I'm focused on basketball and want to continue professionally in basketball, and then, but I'll always love volleyball and do that for fun. He's always got volleyball to fall back on. All right, we are here at halftime. Uh, play will resume in about 10 minutes. But for now, let's send it over to Jesse Kurtz in the Mountain West studio. Jesse. The 2017-2018 Mountain West men's basketball regular season is now in the books. Hi, I'm Jesse Kurtz in the Mountain West Network studio with your first look at the players and coach of the year in the Mountain West. The player of the year in the Mountain West is Caleb Martin from Nevada. The junior forward averaged 20.2 points and 1.4 assists while playing over 34 minutes per game for the regular season champion Wolfpack. With Martin's leadership, Nevada led the Mountain West in scoring, averaging 84.6 points per game and had the highest scoring margin at plus 9.8. The defensive player of the year in the Mountain West is Cody Martin from Nevada. During conference play, Martin recorded 6.8 rebounds and 1.6 steals per contest, leading the Wolfpack defense that held conference opponents to a league best 43.3% from the floor. The newcomer of the year is Nevada's Caleb Martin. The transfer from North Carolina State scored more than 600 points, including 342 points during conference play, leading Nevada to its second consecutive regular season championship in the Mountain West. The freshman of the year is Brandon McCoy from UNLV, who is the highest scoring freshman during conference play, averaging 15.4 points per game. The Chicago native pulled down 9.6 rebounds and shot 51.6% from the floor, which ranked fifth in the conference. The sixth man of the year is Alex Hobbs from Boise State. The sophomore guard had five double-digit scoring performances during conference play, with a season high of 20 points for Fresno State. Hobbs averaged 7.7 .7 points per game and added 2.4 rebounds. The coach of the year in the Mountain West is Eric Musselman from Nevada. His Wolfpack won a regular season championship with a 15-3 record in league play and 26 wins overall. Musselman, who is in his third season in Reno, has won at least 24 games in all three seasons. This season, his team was ranked as high as 20th in the national polls and will have the number one seed in the Mountain West Championship Tournament. You can get a look at the All-Mountain West first, second, and third teams, as well as the All-Defensive team by logging on to the MW.com. From the Mountain West Network Studio, I'm Jesse Kurtz.
our score in our final of three games today at the Thomas and Mack. Wyoming leads San Jose State 40 to 30. College students throughout the country have made commitments to their education, but none more than the cadets at the Air Force Academy. If you visit Colorado Springs, you uh, apparently I'm on the wrong game. I was just told. Well, that's the one I've got in my hand, so. All right, San Jose State's had a lot of people in the news. Let's take a listen. Carter Evans has more on one of the states that's kicking the tires on a mileage tax. California needs $8 billion a year to maintain its transportation infrastructure, but it only raises $2.3 billion. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the gas tax except for one thing, and that is that our legislatures have chosen not to raise the rates. Political scientist Melinda Jackson says superdelegates don't generally end up deciding nomination. The superdelegates get to choose which candidate to support, and they can change their mind. The new law would require companies to pay men and women the same amount. First thing it does is if a woman chooses to get more information about pay, she can ask co-workers and not be retaliated against. ABC 7 is live from the Moss Landing Marine Labs. And Dan, this is truly a world-class operation. Scientists here are also focused on aquaculture. A lot of people that live on, obviously live on land don't understand how important the oceans are to their life. This truck is a mobile lab for the Fire Weather Research Laboratory at San Jose State. We can actually, from a safe distance, scan the fire region with the LIDAR and retrieve the wind speeds. Welcome to Science Friday. Why do you think there's such a lag in what teacher knowledge is when it comes to climate change science? Many teachers did not have a climate change course at all in their careers. He joins us now live outside the Tesla plant in Fremont. Mechanical engineer Professor Fred Berez says sonar could be one way to upgrade the array of sensors on cars with autopilot. Man, if the real Tesla had something like this, it would have prevented that accident. Council members are expected to approve a plan for Google Fiber that would bring blazing fast internet speeds and put a lot of pressure on other internet providers. They will have to compete. They will have to bring up their data rate. They will have to lower the price. This year's hopes for a drought-busting winter doused. El Nino didn't bring everything climate scientists had hoped for. Not in terms of rainfall. Now. So there's been a large amount of cooling. Los ataques terroristas que eh, sucedieron hoy en Bruselas pueden tener efectos importantes en, en, en las elecciones. Roberto González is a professor of anthropology at San Jose State University in California. He explained to me how military funding in the post-war period helped anthropology boom. And then other streams of funding were geared towards other kinds of research having to do with cultural vulnerabilities. San Jose students designed and built this pond car. It's the only pond car in the world that rides suspended on a guide rail. Right now, everything competes on the same plane. That's pedestrians, bicyclists, automobiles. Send it over to Kristen. Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time. Well, Hillsman and Wellage carrying the load for your team. What do you want to see from your other guys in the second half? Well, just to be aggressive. I mean, in tournament atmospheres like this, you just want to try and be aggressive, not walk on eggshells, and play your game to the best of your ability. We've been doing the same thing all year, and the guys are, well, Wellage and Hillsman for sure are really comfortable. Um, and the other guys are comfortable too. They just need to play with confidence. 
Was that the message at halftime to the team? Yeah, definitely. Try and play with confidence. Uh, both teams are on fire shooting the ball. I mean, we're shooting 46 percent. They're shooting 50, I think, three. So it's, it's an offensive game. But at some point in time, someone's going to play defense, either us or them. And that's when the separation will happen. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Ari, right, Doug, back to you guys. Uh, that's honesty right there. Yes, I like it. All right, to the highlights, Justin James. What a first half, 20 points. And, and to Coach Prelo's point, like, there's a hand there, but when a guy's lighting you up, you think you'd be up in his jockey shorts, and they have not been. Justin James making plays, and really it wasn't a selfish 18. No. But like it took him 32 points, and then we talked about him in the open. Ryan Wellich, Good as advertised. Such a skilled shooter. They got him going early with a three. Hit a couple of these little mid-range shots. This little kind of step back off one leg that rolled in. Hit another one here. A little step back, kind of step through, rolls in. And just had himself a quiet little outstanding half. As Ryan Wellich ends up with, uh, what's he got, 14 points at the half? 14, yep. He doesn't lead the way, though. Hillsman's got 16. They've got all 30 of their points, two guys. Well, look at Wyoming, 26 in the paint. Too easy for the Spartans. But this has not been a defensive slugfest. It's been a much easier, cleaner watch. Just at some point, as he said, somebody's going to play some defense. Uh, I'll be curious to see what they try to do differently on Justin James once we get the second half underway, which is coming up in just a few seconds. You want to keep him out of off his right hand. That's a big thing. He's very good. He, he, he does it all off his right hand. Doesn't mean he can't use his left, but he's, he's a very strong right hand dominant guy. All right, so this is day one of the 2018 Men's Mountain West Basketball Championships. We know three of the quarterfinal matchups already. Number one, Nevada taking on number eight, UNLV. Then four, Fresno State taking on number five, San Diego State, which should be a great game. Number two, Boise State taking on number seven, Utah State. And then the number three seed, New Mexico, awaits the winner of our game right now, Wyoming and San Jose State. It's all those games, all those quarterfinals, all four of them coming up tomorrow right here at the Thomas and Max Center. And if this Wyoming score holds, remember the last time these two teams met up in Laramie is what, 119, 114? Yes. That'll Defense was optional. Might even frowned upon. James finds Kelly, open three, yes. You know, he made the first layup of the game and he makes the first three of the second half, so. Hey, Tony he Kelly gives them make, five points, they're good with it. Tony Kelly can make shots. It makes you at least have to guard him, something you didn't have to do at times this year. So the lead is 13, the biggest lead of the game so far for the Cowboys. That runner, no. Momeka the rebound. Justin James, been sublime in this game, just, just so smooth. Hayden Dalton, jumper off the glass. And that was Dr. J, I felt like, right there. That, that was nice. Now, Liz Lang, Hayden's great aunt, is watching him with happy and proud tears. Oh, and, and I bet Teal Kirkhart like that, too. She has a daughter named Hayden and a son named Dalton. <laughs> Okay, this is not Dr. J. This is a Sigma-esque move. You catch the ball just off the post and you re reverse pivot into a shot off the backboard. Watch, catch, reverse pivot, bank shot. Because Dr. J was my first hero, I try to just get him wanted... in when I can. I just love Dr. J. I, I totally get it. I get it like you want to drop a Dr. <laughs> J do. reference. I do, that's it. I mean, he did use, he used, you know, high off the glass from the wing. No basket. I didn't even know how that was a foul, and neither does Herndon. Hillsman's guarding him, watch Hillsman, I guess kind of with his lower body, rode him out a little bit. If that's a foul, that should be a continuation. <laughs> Otherwise, it shouldn't be a foul. Herndon's three, count it. <clears throat> Nice when you got a guy at 6'9 who plays the five for you, can knock down triples. His 43rd made three of the season. It's an 18 point lead all of a sudden. San Jose goes under all of these screens. Outlet, and it's James waiting for the basketball. 
and gets the two, and he now has 22 points, and the lead is 20. 10-0 run to start the second half. Well, I do believe that John Prelo predicted that there'd be separation at some point when somebody plays defense. Wasn't that what we told you, Kristen Balboni? Yeah, that's exactly what I, he said. Wyoming's played a little defense, there's the separation. Well, while we got some time, should we should we talk a little Mountain West? A little Mountain West all, um, awards? Yeah. All right. Let's Go get for into it. Well, so I want to get everyone's everyone's watching. I'd love to know what Wyoming fans think about this. Uh, the awards were given out. The coaches voted. That is the awards that they go for. Here they are, right here. Player of the year, Caleb Martin. Coach of the year, Eric Musselman. Um, freshman of the year, Brandon McCoy. You can see the rest right here. I want to know what everyone on Facebook thinks. Well, the, well I just want to have a qualifier for the Wyoming fans. I mean, Justin James was first team, and Hayden Dalton was second team. So Wyoming did have nice representation. Absolutely, absolutely. But those were the official awards yeah. given out. So I want to know what everyone thinks. I want to know, Ari, what do you think? How, uh, do you think they got it right? Uh, not all of them. No, I mean, I think the freshman year, McCoy, that, that one's a landslide. I don't think anybody's even close in that. But I, I really believe that Chandler Hutchinson was the premier player in the Mount West this year. I've already spoken my piece on that yeah. one. I, I, I tend Doug to agree, agrees. although, look, Caleb Martin's a really good player. Really good. And I, I can't say that I have a ton of issues with it. If, it. if I was voting and somebody asked me to rank them, I would have had Hutchinson one. A lot of people are agreeing with you. Tom agrees. I saw a couple of other comments. The coach of the year one, I, 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 I think you could split it. I think you could go muscle and, and Paul Weir. And the media did. I think that's the right to do it, is to split the coach of the year. But, but are we... <laughs> And I know it's his first year there, but are we giving Paul Weir uh, the Tim Tebow Award, which is they were bad early in the middle of the, and, and in kind of in the middle of the year, and then they figured it out late. Like, are we rewarding them for the, putting out the fire that they started? Right. Well, it's what he inherited. It, it's you know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of new pieces on that team yeah. that, that he put in place as yeah. well. Look, I mean, Musselman had the best but, I mean, team. Like, he led him to the title. Like San Diego State won their last five games. Does that count? Does, Yes, uh, Musselman led them to a title. They also lost their point guard to a torn yep. Achilles tendon, Lindsey Drew. So it wasn't. I love Moss. I mean, he's a, you know, he, he, he won it. I just think Weir, Weir's right there. I think Weir did more with less. I would probably agree with that. People are both agreeing and disagreeing with both of you in the comments. And then, no we've heard, then, then, we, then we've, hit the, then we've heard the, hit the perfect level right there. <laughs> Cody Kelly, the drive, the kick. He couldn't get the shot off. All right, now they got to think shot clock here. Kelly in traffic. No, but it'll go to the free throw. I have a tendency to root for the little guys for obvious reasons, and Cody Kelly's easy to root for. How, how can Cody Kelly be hard? I mean, here's a kid who grows up in Wyoming, dreams of playing for the Pokes. They don't want him, goes to junior college, comes back, all right, we'll let you come back and walk on. Now he's your starting point guard. Yep. What do you think his actual height is? 5'9". Five, uh, probably 5'9", five, I mean, but he's, he's a, he's a thicken too. He's, oh Never no. Never heard the expression thicken. Thicken. <laughs> <laughs> he's a thicken. Wait, did you say biggin, thicken? Now, isn't that Arka Gorski's grandma, that is dad and grandma? Dad and grandma. They're over from Sweden. From Sweden. And can they uh, just click on and say they were watching on Facebook? Now, dad in the country. No. Least? Now his sister and his mom were here as well for yes. senior day. That is. But they had to go back because she had school. That and is. so they stayed. Yes. And this is their first time in Las Vegas. If that's not a reality show, I don't know what is. Piotr awesome. Gorski and grandma is Gunnel Kimmerstedt. They are from Loon, Sweden. I mean, I don't know if you pronounce it right, but you really nailed it. Well, it sounded convincing. Well, I had to write it all phonetically, yes. so hopefully. <laughs> well, Edge, they need it. Man, they well, Edge is good. He's got 17. He just needs to develop his body. Some guys just don't develop it. Looks like Jimmy Chitwood. Shoots it like Jimmy <laughs> Chitwood, too. There's Akrakorski right there. 
I feel like I've seen Wellage say more tonight than Jimmy Chitwood would say in a season. <laughs> well, the, the 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 rumor goes that the reason Jimmy Chitwood had so few lines was that native English was not his native native language. I mean, actually, I played pickup ball against him. Oh yes. Yeah, in, oh, in Orange County. Yeah, had to I mean, go. He's, he's good. He's not like Jimmy Chitwood. But he just, <laughs> he's no Jimmy Chitwood. Yeah. He's no Jimmy Chitwood. Uh, Fisher's got four fouls for the Spartans. James in traffic. Got 24 and folks. Still hasn't missed a shot. Nine for nine. Do we have our Facebook yeah. player of the game locked up? Yeah, we give everyone the opportunity to vote on Facebook player of the game. I'd say he's running away with it so far. You better, somebody better start doing something or he's going to win. JT says Grandma Gorski needs some folks here. I mean, they could probably get that done. Yeah, I think they can make it happen. I mean, somebody right here in the arena could get it done. I mean, go, I mean, they sell merchandise at these things for all the schools. There's Just, grandma. Get somebody's it. great. She's a grandma. She can wear whatever. She's got a nice, I mean, she's lovely. Just be happy she didn't go full Vegas and come in with a new piercing and tattoo. <laughs> Leather jacket. <laughs> Vegas, here I am. I, you're staying at the Hard Rock. That, the the tattoo to non-tattoo ratio is a good three to one. Yeah, no, I, I throw off the numbers over there. I like the Hard Rock. Yeah, I like it that you can walk to the arena. Let's see if San Jose can dig in and get a stop. Down by 18, still lots of time. 16 minutes to go. Akagorski, nope. You see James above the rim there going for the offensive putback. He's smiling, going like this, rubbing his hands. He thought he had a chance. Now, Alan Edwards got to be pleased. These guys are playing well, up 18. In a game where, look, they're one and done. They don't win this game. They got no chance to go to the tournament, and they have been focused from the outset. And they've leaned heavily on Justin James. What do you got, Chris? Well, and what about we saw his his mom or family checked in earlier, yep. watching from all over. So you know they've got to be really, really, really happy to get to see this performance. We hope you'll keep commenting. The family of Justin James. Now that is some gear right there. I yeah. like that, my own gear. I want to talk though about the tournament. We are now on game three of our three today. We get a little bit of better sense of the matchups tomorrow. Yes. And uh, you know Nevada, of course, is the heavy favorite to take it all. Home, but if Nevada doesn't do it, who do we think has the best shot? Which would, you know, therefore mean two bid, two bids to the NCAA tournament. Well, Doug's affected me because if you look at how tough the top half is, it does make you look to the bottom half to have a different winner. Very interesting. I want to know what everyone on Facebook thinks too. Take a look at this bracket and send us your send us your suggestions too. Who you got? Can I help Sorry, you on the Doug? on the can, can I can I take the Kayla Martin side here? You know, Ian Chandler Hutchinson averaged the same number of points okay. this year. How about rebounding? Uh, Hutchinson obviously a better rebounder, but you know, one's a guard, one's a playing the four. Yep. Yeah. You know, whereas uh, Kayla Martin is you know just a scoring guard. Who would you say is better defensively? Probably Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the point is that you're we're going off of the assumption because you saw the 40-point game that that's who Chandler Hutchinson was, and the reality was not necessarily who was. was. You know, while you're mulling that, we have a top-10 matchup of lacrosse on Saturday. Number three, Duke heads to Baltimore to take on number seven, Loyola of Maryland. You can catch this great matchup. Only on Facebook, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can tell those guys are going to be watching. Yeah. Focus. Shout out to Jasmine. Justin's family is still here. That is from uh, his sister, Jess. Somebody had a funny text, or maybe she just, you know, dropped a great gift. Oh, man. All right, Doug, let's get back to basketball. What do the Spartans need to do to get back in this? Uh, get a bucket, get a stop. Get a bucket, get a stop. And the first thing is, you got to oh. make a night. There it is. Part one of your plan. That's been fine. The offense in many ways from J.C. Hillsman has been good. Hillsman, we talked about a little bit earlier, struggled with a jump shot, lost the starting spot, earned his way back in. He's been outstanding. 
18 points on 7 of 12 shooting. I, I still would. I'd, that's where I'd help is Cody Kelly. I would leave him. Akagorski open again, and this time he connects. And, and again, like, Kelly gets the basketball. Why are you overhelping on that drive? And Caleb Simmons was helped out like, like it was Justin James driving to the basket. Oh! Above the rim, Lou Adams. Lou, you can hear him chanting, Lou. Three no good, Herndon had the rebound, lost it, and it will be San Jose State basketball. Beautiful pass from James. I can't tell you how impressive it is to have a guy who hasn't missed a shot, and he's not, it's not like he's trying to go for 50. If I had missed a shot, and I'm 14, 30 in the game, and I got 20 points, I'm launching, aren't you? Of course. I mean, it never happened to me, but it sounds exciting. I, I'd like to know what that feels like. But uh, not, so far, a very nice team game from the Pokes. Hillsman, tough shot, man, in his shot. face. Not a great shot. Earned in the rebound. Look at Hayden Armstrong has, says he has a Jimmy Chitwood poster in his room. The question is, Hayden, does it help your jump shot? Adams on the drive, no. Uh-oh, almost a turnover. Bowman into the front court with it. I didn't know they made posters of Jimmy Chitwood. Nifty move. Keith Fisher. First points of the game for Keith Fisher. He got a chance to be a good player at this level. We mentioned he played at Westchester High School for Ed Azam. Have an undersized post. Gonna be a really good player as that knee heals and he gets more minutes. Herndon's three. Boom. Yes, and James, another assist, his third. Well, this is a San Jose team that they just overhelp. And they're not terribly athletic on the basketball. But they're overhelping and they're allowing Wyoming to step in open look threes. And Wyoming calmly knocking them down. Barry. That's good half court offense there from the Spartans. with it, gives it up. James doesn't want the three. Adams does. Now that's the guy you help off. That's fine. He's not a shooter. Know who you're guarding, and if it's a really good shooter, you what's called close out full. You get all up uh, over him. You don't help that much. He's a non-shooter. You close out. You don't close out at all or close out short. You close out halfway if he's a decent shooter. James, good defense. Knocks it out of bounds. Dalton uh, and Redding check in for the Cowboys. They're overhelping as if they're playing a team of great drivers, and this is a Wyoming team that shoots the three very, very well. And the last time they took on San Jose State, they set 42 threes. You can see why. Hillsman's three. Nope. Dalton the rebound. Dalton's third rebound. He has five assists to go along with his seven points. Could be another assist right there, and it is. Akagorski suddenly got hot. Hit a couple of threes here in the second half. And this one's getting out of hand. Oh, they're excited. That's the family right there, as we said, from Sweden.
Fisher's jumper is good. Dalton thought about the long three. Still 10 on the shot clock. Spins away from trouble. Akagorski, another one. Yes. Three three-point field goals for Akagorski. And look, yeah, Grandma is having a great time. Grandma and Dad are excited and pumped. And good hands there by Redding to knock it out. The back side of the court. And a timeout on the floor. We keep things right here, but here's the third three of the half for Akagorski. Alexander Akagorski and dad's happy, grandma's happy. High five. We do high five in this country. We <laughs> hug in our country. 67 43 hour score, and let's do some social media, Kristen. What do we got? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just loving watching the family. There's nothing like family. We love seeing all of the families of players commenting. I think that's really great. As I said, Justin James' family is here. Remember, you can post on Instagram using that hashtag MWMadness. Show us how you're watching, who you're rooting for, what your setup looks like. We'd love to see it. Um, another thing that, that we love doing on Facebook is Ask Doug. We've got a lot of questions already. We've got people saying, oh, love Doug. So glad to have him here. So let everyone ask you some questions. All right, all right fire away. Yeah, well, Where I are you have... living in Chicago? That's a big question. The West Loop. West Loop. The West Loop. But it's not, it's not Ask Kristen. Sorry. Ask Tom, I was into right? it. I've been to the whole stadium thing. It's been a great company. Yeah. I've been awesome. I've had a blast this year. It's been Working nice with you guys. To, it's been nice to. We, we do, got to do a lot of Mountain West together. Oh, I know. And we've been set fun. together. Does this this Chicago thing mean you're not going to come out of West anymore? Oh, I'm coming. If you guys are doing a game, I want to be in. on the game. Come on. Okay. Giddy, come on. Giddy. What, all right, what's the question? I want to know. I'll start off the yes. Ask Doug. Uh, a lot of we were talking about, you know, other teams other than Nevada's potential to win the tournament. Of course, all the Pokes fans say it's Wyoming. So my first Ask Doug question of the half is, what do you think Wyoming's potential is in this tournament? Now that you've seen them. Well, we saw them against, I like their team I against New Mexico. Them right now. Well, if, if, they if got Kelly a shot? Can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no question um, that, that they do because they can they can really score. Uh, the You know, the issue with, with who, they, who they play next is that New we'll Mexico. New Mexico next, who's beaten them twice. And we did the game at New Mexico yep. in which they, frankly, they, they struggled to score, struggled to create the mismatches. Uh, Herndon, Herndon didn't shoot well in that game. And uh, I didn't feel like they had enough score. They really packed it in off of Cody Kelly. And then up in Laramie, it was 119-114 defense optional. Those are the type of games I think they have a, got a good chance. New Mexico a little bit more athletic off the dribble than Wyoming is, but Wyoming can be very, very skilled. So yeah, there's, I don't think there's any reason they can't. And who knows, if you get past New Mexico, who knows who's waiting for you in the semifinals? Right. Okay. I think we operate in the assumption that it's gonna be, be gonna be Boise State, but you know, Boise has Utah State, a team that we saw nearly beat Boise at Boise. We called that game, didn't we? Yes, we did. Are you've been doing this tournament for a long time, you know that anything can happen. Yeah, anything we've had plenty of, yes. Fre we've had Fresno win it, we had Wyoming win it. That Wyoming win was special. There was something about that Larry Shia coach team that was easy to like. Of course, Jeremy Shiat announced on uh, Instagram yesterday, he and his new bride expecting a cowboy in the fall. That's awesome. Larry Shiat still coaching and assistant with the Mavs. Boom! Hayden Dalton hits a three. And that's where Hayden Dalton, you, you, play, you put a traditional center on Hayden Dalton. Ooh, that was a nasty screen. Redding shaking up. Guys are going to go and check on him. Make and Keith sure Frazier, okay. what, a, what, a, what a great gesture. He set the screen. He just stood there and waited. And Keith Frazier was a big, strong kid. Watch, he's got his hands up. He's not moving. Oh, that's on Hayden Dalton. Hayden Dalton has to call a screen. Anthony wants to know, what Vegas site do you love to come back to? That's an Ask Doug question. This one when New Mexico and UNLV and Wyoming are good. This is, I think, the best. The, the past couple years, honestly, it's been the Pac-12 tournament. The Pac-12 tournament is now 
at T-Mobile, which is a little bigger than MGM. MGM is like 2,000 seats. Um, so I think this year it'd probably be the Pac-12, but I love Thomas and Mack. I've played here twice. I've done oh, I love this 30 games broadcasting here. Ari and I are hooked on the sushi place around the corner. That's right. And look, the, no one's, we, we've, talk, we've seen it in the comments, but the court is awesome. The new court that they have. Yeah. I just think it's so cool. Well, it's, uh, they did this, I don't know, four years ago or so. For it's just classic, yeah. too. Yeah. It's really nice. Not the same one they used during the regular season that shows the this skyline. Just the, sky yeah. the skyline was, we, yeah, this season, and then this is the... This, this, is the Mountain West, this is the Mountain West specific court. Yeah, but we've been seeing that all on the on Facebook. Everyone's loving it. Come on, Akagorski, number four. Ah. I mean, I don't I mean, know like, grandma's listen, here. Listen, if grandma's here, you got to yeah, keep firing. Yeah. And if somebody says that, that was a bad shot, like, well, my grandma told me to take it. <laughs> what are you going to do? You need to argue with the Swedish grandma? Fisher, no. Loose ball. Akagorski with it. And this is nice for Coach Edwards because if they're going to win four games in four days, the starters aren't having to play deep minutes today. As Dalton launches a three. And this has not exactly been a physical game. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's... And remember, you know, th there's a little bit of altitude in, in Vegas, 2,500 feet. But you come out of Laramie playing at 7,000 feet the whole year, you should, you should be able to play all day. 20, this is nothing. Oh, Cody Kelly, nice hustle. Cody Kelly's one of those kids going to be the governor of Wyoming at some point. They're like, ah, you know, he doesn't shoot it all that much. Undersized. 20 years from now, he'll be governor of Wyoming. And, hey, and Cody, beloved. Remember Cody Kelly? He played at Wyoming. Yeah, I remember the kids. Hey, he's a governor now. Yeah, no, no, he played. Inside, Chastain, no. Fight for it. It's two it's guys on the same team had it for a minute. Jump ball, possession to the Spartans. And uh, Austin Carta Samuel says, give Dalton some rest for tomorrow. I'm with you, Austin. Dalton, I, you, you do want everybody to hit one more shot, and he's playing them with the, with the bench players. Well, it's been quiet for a minute. Hillsman's three, wow, he's had some game. 22 points for J.C. Hillsman. And that is a new career high for J.C. Previous career high, 21 points, coming just back on February the 3rd of this year against New Mexico. The team they're going to be playing tomorrow. Dalton misses the three. I think Alan Edwards is just hit one more shot, and then I'm going to take you out. Hit one more shot, he got in two real wide open looks. I think the big challenge for John Prelo, and look, San Jose State, people forget Rick Berry, Ricky Berry, Rick Berry Sr., not, not the Rick Berry, a different Rick Berry, and Coach Rick Berry, J Ricky Berry, who was a first round draft pick of the Sacramento Kings. This is go back to the 80s. And actually, sad story, I think San Jose State people know it, Ricky Berry Jr. committed suicide. That was the last time San Jose State was really good basketball. And they didn't have a level of investment in the program. They're stuck in the PCAA and then the Big West. Now you're in the Mountain West. I think John Prelo, he's starting to recruit the caliber of athlete. And I have seen Dave Wojcik did a good job in terms of increasing the caliber of athlete at SJSU. But they got to be better defensively. And they just It's just too easy to score on them. Kristen, what's next? Yeah, well, I want to show a really cool Instagram picture here. This is from our truck. Oh, yeah. We got Marty, our producer and director. It was taken by Andy, who's also on the producing directing team. We got Chris over there in the corner. And, you know, we've all kind of become a little bit of a family doing these Mountain West games. Oh, and we just yeah. appreciate all they do in the truck. They make us look good every single game. And I, I single out all of you fantastic, but I've known Marty now for nine years. Marty's and Marty, the man. Marty, when you joined this this Facebook package, it changed everything. It's been it's been awesome. Okay, Thank you, Marty. Question, Marty. What are all those blank TV screens? Yeah. Shouldn't they have? And there's a lot of the same screen on there. It kind of looks like this was a set made for TV picture. Yeah, Marty's not even doing it. That's not even Marty. No, I just, he's like, he's like, get off. He's like, stop talking about me. We love you, Marty. Uh, I, I also want to know from Pokes fans, you know, James and Dalton have been quite the dynamic duo. And I feel like every 
dynamic duo needs a little nickname, right? Okay. Like they need a nickname going through the rest of this tournament, okay. I think. Do they have one? Post fans, let me know. And if not, can we come up with one for them? You think they gotta have something working, huh? Well, all right, just for a little karma's sake. Okay. okay. Wyoming's last Mountain West Conference Tournament win was in 2015, the last time they won the Mountain West Conference Tournament. They've been knocked out in the first round the past wow. couple of years. So. Nickname for Dalton James? They deserve a Dalton nickname. James. D and, J, D and J. DJ. DJ? No, no <laughs> D and J Ranch, because it's got to be like, kind of like D and J Ranch. Oh, like welcome I to see. the D and J Saloon. Look at him, the D and J Saloon. The Ranch. Come and you, can't, you can't come and get one drink, you got to get three. I don't know. Cody says Batman and Robin, but there's no Robin. I don't know. So that's a tough call. Yeah, tough. Dalton Dalton James is actually kind of a cool, cool name. name yeah. right? That's a cool name. It was uh, like a Dalton lawyer James. somewhere. Yeah. Dalton Dalton James. Attorney at law. Dalton James LLC. Dalton James Gang says Benson. Dalton James Gang. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Look out, Jesse. There's a new James in town. <laughs> the Dalton James Gang. Uh, loose ball tracked down by Mo Mecca. Fresh shot clock for the Pokes. Kogorski's been hot. Maldonado. Mueller's three. No. Mueller. Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. Now you're in Chicago now. Yeah. Please yeah. tell me you get that reference. I, do, oh, I know Ferris Bueller's Day. Okay, off. I'm just, okay. you're a little young. I mean, that was. Yeah, it's, it's shot in the suburbs, right? All John, you, need to watch all, you need to watch John Hughes movies. Yes. yes. I've seen them fine. all. I didn't see them when they came out. Wait, all of them? You've seen all of them? 16 candles, yeah. all nine oh, yards. Yeah, but just not, pink? I didn't see them, Pretty of course. Pink. Weird Science. Uh, I don't know about that. They're always on, like, you know, ABC Family. You need to watch Weird Science. <laughs> Okay. Beethoven, Uncle Buck. Some kind of wonderful. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, planes, trains, and automobiles, good. But if you want a sappy one for you and your man, do yeah. some kind of wonderful. Okay. Real, real, okay. Real fuzzy some notes. Great outdoors. Great outdoors. Collision. Foul on the Spartans. 6 12 to go. A lot of outlaws talk for the nicknames. Yeah, I like that. Outlaws. Fisher has fouled out. Sure. But Keith Fisher, that kid, I, I, I love him. Everybody in L.A. really likes his kid and is rooting for him. And even the spirit by which he, he fouled out of the game, he comes over and sprints over. And it was just accidental contact. There's some really good building pieces for John Prelo. And I, I completely understand if you watch this conference for a long time, you're like, yeah, I got it. San Jose State stinks. They got some pieces here. And give the guy a chance to recruit for a couple of years. See what happens. Now remember, at San Jose State, also you're not really good. you're going to be recruiting bounce backs. You're going to be recruiting transfers, and I think his time in the Pac-12 will really help him. Now the issue is that everyone else is recruiting transfers as well. New Mexico's got two really good ones sitting out, for example. How about Boise State's got two senior graduate transfers in their starting lineup? So yeah, well, spring is, spring is a, a big time now for grad transfers. But you got to be smart. You have to have, you really better know what you're getting. Oh, yeah. You don't want to get somebody else's problem. This kid has been very good, too. Man, well, he's got another year. Great student athlete. You know, he took a trip with, uh, uh, with Athletes in Action. And if you look online, there's actually the letter that, he, the open letter that he wrote, because you have to solicit donations in order mm -hmm. to get some, to, in order to get those donations. He's just a tremendous representative of a kid coming from Indiana, wanting to get an education, You're right there in the heart of Silicon Valley, using basketball to open doors for him. And he can play. He had a game against Wyoming this year. He went for 37. And Redding is bumped by Barry. Neither team in the bonus. And you know what else we could talk about, mm -hmm. Kristen? Mm -hmm. It's a wrap for us, the three of us. We've had a, we've had a nice run. We could have some final thoughts or gift from Facebook. What, what do you like? What do you not like? So we can learn and grow for next season. Yeah, yeah. We hope that all of you have enjoyed watching with us and being a part of this conversation. So let us know. Let us yeah. know how you find the, the broadcast. 
and we got thick skin. Yeah, unless it's negative. <laughs> unless we it's only negative want to see feedback. positive stuff, of course. Akagorski, not this time. Akagorski has not taken a shot from inside the arc. It's three for nine, all from downtown. Hillsman lost the handle, and it'll be Wyoming basketball. Caleb Simmons will check back in for the Spartans. It has been a long game for the Spartans. Well, Wyoming hasn't scored in over five minutes. They've missed their last seven shots. And granted, their entire starting five is over. Planted on the bench, resting for tomorrow's game against New Mexico. Maldonado, now it's Redding. Redding in traffic, and he's fouled. See, they're gonna call it a shooting foul. When I learned early on that I, that I found to be profound about the Facebook experience is the interaction with all the players' families from wherever they've been. Yeah. I remember early on I had a game at San Jose against St. Mary's, and St. Mary's had five Australian players, and three of the five parents rode in during the game. Yep. They said, we've never that. seen a game live. I, and then, you know, really? for me, they had never been. You know, I thought the season. WCC has a really good anyway. Yeah. Uh, Alexander Akagorski, by the way, making grandma proud that she's glad that she stayed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love getting to talk to the fans during the game. Growing up, we didn't get to go to a lot of live games, so any way we can bring people in, you know, it's great. How about Alfalfa and Buckwheat <laughs> for James and Dalton? Little Rascals? Alfalfa and Buckwheat. That is a little bit of dated reference. <laughs> well, I, I didn't come up with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hillsman, another two. First time this season, the Spartans have two players with 20 plus points. Hillsman and Wellish both with 22. Redding's jumper, no. Wellage the rebound. Long pass, Momeka. And the Cowboy fans like that. Little exclamation point late. It's the lead back to 20. And Barry won't be able to save that one. And our final media timeout. And this is an issue for San Jose State is no true point guard, no true point guard feel. A little bit of a lack of fight. And the hard thing is you, you don't want to make it a miserable experience when you've had a tough year and you had a coaching change in August. On the other hand, you don't want to make it okay to lose and to get blown out. And this is a San Jose State team that for the most part has shown great fight. Not a lot of fight right here. And you know, usually around this time at the last break, we ask for your suggestions for we don't want any suggestions for Facebook anymore. player no of more. the game. But look, it was decided. <laughs> Ari called it, I think, the first minute of the second half. We, we all know who it is. Oh, yeah. Justin James. He's the leader of the Justin James game. Yeah. All right, and again, the 24 outlaws. points, 9 of 9 from the field, 3 of 3 from the three-point line, three of three from the free-throw line, four rebounds and three assists. But the, 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 most, <laughs> the most impressive part, honestly, was end of the first half, had an open look but not great rhythm, made the extra pass. Start of the second half, had an open look, made the extra pass. That's what Coach said to me at the half. He said he's not being selfish about it. Not at all. Not at all. He not could have gone for 30 all. some easy. 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 I mean, he's... <laughs> They, they're not good defensively at all. They weren't pressuring him into his left hand where he's a little bit weaker and making him take, you know, contest long range shots. And he's feeling good. But, to, like, part of me says, like, hey, dude, you should go for 35. But, but 
I just appreciate the fact that he's making everybody feel good. Yep. He already feels good about it. Well, because they know this is not the final game, right? No, they no, got I, more going I know, but how many times are you going to get a chance to go for, go for 30 or 40? Yeah. He was humming early. <laughs> Frank Feldman Frank. says, Wyoming, enjoy this game. Lobos are waiting for it. Lobos are a great story coming in. We've, we've talked about what that coaching staff has done, what the players have done, the buy-in. And look, they're they're all in on playing 94 feet. They're going to force you to score and force you to play your t their tempo. Wyoming, you, you, Wyoming uh, New Mexico, part three, that's going to be just a great watch. It could be the nightcap tomorrow night, starting at around 8.30 Pacific time. My guy Steve Lapis on the call. And Andrew Catalan. Well, these teams are still battling. Jump ball, they'll keep it on this end. Twenty-nine left in this one. Twenty-point game has been in doubt for a long time. Mike Velasquez checking in on his folks from Anchorage, Alaska. How you doing, Mike? Stay warm. Now off the foot of Nichols. Under Maldonado. goes between the hands. All right, we've lost Kristen for the moment. She's going to get ready for a post-game interview. So I don't feel like I've nailed down. If it's not Nevada, who is going to win the Mountain West title? I said Boise State. And you're just sticking with you. That's your confident. That's just it. No, I'm like, I think San Diego State's got a great shot. I okay. just... I, I'm worried that San Diego State, everybody's focusing on them getting another shot at Nevada, who they just beat. Hey, they got to get past Fresno State yeah. before they get there. An excellent point. You know what that's like? That's like um, this happens all the time when you're when you're down three and you got to miss the second free throw. Guys often miss the first free throw. <laughs> that's right. Start looking ahead. Well, for Coach Prelo, he is going to have a full offseason, get his guys, and sure we're expecting better things for the Spartans come next season. Simmons being hounded. Cowboys still playing good defense. Wellage the three, not this time. Alan Maldonado. Both teams now with 16 fouls. Minutes to go. What has been a full day of Mountain West men's basketball here at the Thomas and Mac. If you're in town, there are two women's games coming up later tonight, right here in this facility. Barry back to the basket. A nice post move. A nice patience on the move. Well, for San Jose State, another lost season, but with a young, ambitious coach in his 40s, he's been around and seen tremendous building jobs. You got to hope that. Some of this young talent, add in a couple pieces, probably take some transfers. We've got a chance. But Wyoming, got to feel really good about the team's effort today. Hey, they were sharp. Passed it well, shot it well, defended okay. And they're going fully healthy, a third shot at the Lobos. Right now, they've matched their largest margin of victory in a Mountain West tournament game. 
15-point win over San Diego State all the way back in 2001. I believe that was the year before Steve Fisher got there. Nichols, tough shot, no. Goes and gets it and puts it back. So Wyoming is a winner. They move on to the quarterfinals and all the quarterfinal matchups are set. First Mountain West tournament win for the Cowboys since 2015. They move on to play New Mexico. Well, that was a full day, Doug. It's fun. I could do one more. You got one more in you? I, don't, I, I could, but I'm not going to. But I, <laughs> Rock Agorski's Grandma Agorski. Hey, congratulations. She should be our player of the game. First trip to, the, to Las Vegas, and she's a winner. Big time winner. And remember, when you're up in Vegas, it's time to go. She's going to stay for tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> And her grandson, Aka Gorski, goes for 11 points. He hit three threes. There's dad. And let's go to Kristen with coach. Coach, first Mountain West tournament since the 2015 championship. How'd you get it done, and what does it mean to you and your team? Well, you know, going into the game, it was all about the first four minutes, uh, the first half and the second half, and playing the, our brand of basketball and just continuing throughout the whole game. And I thought we uh, uh, did that uh, for the most part. And then uh, the best part about it was we had an opportunity to rest some of our guys so they wasn't playing 38, 39 minutes. Justin James, an absolutely incredible night. And you told me at the half, you said the best thing about what he's done is that he's not been selfish about it. Talk about his night. Well, again, you know, we had a good sit down before the tournament start. And he's a, he's a scorer. And he, he's that talented of a player. But my thing for his development as a basketball player is making his teammates better as well, but also rebounding the basketball for us. Because when he rebounds for us, we're even a better team. And I thought he did that tonight. All right, Coach, we know you got a quick turnaround and a lot to prepare for, so thank you for taking the time. We appreciate, appreciate it. All right, Ari, Doug, back to you guys. All right, congratulations to Coach Edwards. And here's what it looks like tomorrow. Number one seeded Nevada taking on the eight seed UNLV. Then it's Fresno State, the four seed, taking on the five seed San Diego State. Then next up, number two seed Boise State taking on the seven seed Utah State. And the nightcap, the New Mexico Lobos and the Wyoming Cowboys and what could be a great game, all Man. those games with our Quarter. friends over on CBS Sports Network. Quarterfinals are, look great. They Wyoming, look New Mexico three. We saw Boise, Utah State. They matched up twice. Fresno, San Diego State. That's a good one. And then Vegas against Nevada. Please don't call us Reno. Uh, <laughs> UNLV versus UNR. And of course, the Rebs beat Nevada earlier this year. Uh, th those are all good games. All good games. And as we put a wrap on the Mountain West Facebook schedule this year, I, I feel really fortunate. I got to be on every single Mountain West Facebook game. You did? Every single one of them. And uh, it was a ton of fun. You guys are class acts. Even Gottlieb turned out to be a good guy. We <laughs> Big <had> surprise. A... <laughs> <laughs> I love our the, the art of the backhanded compliments. Oh, the backhanded compliments. That was that was That's what I do. Of course. Yeah. That'll be I, Jeff fun. I think this has been a great time. Uh, you know, Ari, you told me you've done so many of these Mountain West games. Doug, I know you have too. The atmosphere, the fans, the venues, there's nothing like it. This was my first season doing Mountain West basketball, and I just absolutely love it. And then you look at the added element of Facebook where you don't have to go to the venues to get the fans right you know you get but we, want, we do all... want the fans to go to the venue because <laughs> yeah. i'll tell you the pit like when we did that game at the pit it was good but when the pit is rocking oh, yeah. it's better oh, laramie yeah. same, thing. same thing rocking better colorado state moby arena better yeah the show better when they're really really good well and i think it's better when you get to see you know all the people that couldn't make it there yes. on facebook act in the same way that they would act you know i just picture them in their living rooms just going crazy and we get to bring that in to everyone on the game. And we've been a part of something brand new. I mean, this yeah. could be the new normal where people get to interact, and I think it's something that's uh, going to continue, and hopefully we'll all get to be a part of it. And, and I, you know, look, I've, I've been able to do this league, have been part of this league. My brother was in this league for eight years. I think it's great. I think the fact that the league is willing to take chances yep. and, and put a game out there on social, put a series of games out there on social is huge. We're going to continue to do it, continue to grow and evolve and take more feedback and probably... You know, in years to come, you'll be able not just to, you know, respond with a comment, but with a video. And, but don't tell us you're watching in Pakistan <laughs> and not give us a photo. If you're really watching in Pakistan, I need to see some sand. I need to see some hills. I need to see some hummus. I need to see something that says Pakistan. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, before we go, big thanks to you, Christian. You just hustled all season. Aww, you just brought you it. All the storylines, everything you did. Enjoy the great stuff. Aww.
guys, it's been it's been a, a pleasure working with you. And I heard that about the snow. I'm yep. not going to forget it. I'm going to knock that. Hopefully, we'll be back next season. And just thank you to all the fans. You guys made my job so much better. All the family members that chimed in. Yep. All the you know, just everyone. We really appreciate. And congrats on your new full-time well, gig with Stadium. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You'll be seeing a lot more of me. All right, we're getting out of here. This was fun. Appreciate both of you. For my broadcast partners, Doug Gottlieb and Kristen Balboni and our entire stadium crew, including all the good folks at Facebook, I'm Ari Wolf saying good night from Las Vegas. Final score, Wyoming wins 74-61. to For more live games, replays, classic games, and daily original studio programming, visit watchstadium.com or search stadium in your local channel guide. Big thanks to everyone. Big thanks to Adam and Shell. Had a great time all season. Hope you enjoy the rest of the tournament and March Madness.